Hello, everybody. Welcome to Arsenal X, NGR Radio's Xbox podcast. Even in audio form, we throw up the X. <laughs> yes, because we're about to throw down. Joining me is my wise Wisconsinite, Mr. Jesse Douglas. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Yes, uh, fortunately, Boss Man won't be able to join us. Um, he is... Uh, recovering from the weekend <laughs> and uh, a lot of things um, have came up and you know he's being the boss and handled them well so uh, unfortunately he won't be on this episode hopefully we will have him next episode so we can have a discussion uh, on the Battlefield 5 beta and the Blackout beta for Call of Duty 4 and also talk Forza Horizon for uh, demo so um, we're going to try to get get you guys our opinions about that. But do check out the uh, Arsenal X Xbox channel for Nurse Go Rogue, uh, where you guys can watch Jesse and uh, Corey play Battlefield Five and play some Call of Duty Black Ops Four. Um, they were streaming them a couple of weeks ago, so they, they're really good, really fun. Um, I have thoughts on them, positive thoughts, actually. I have it. Um, and I think we all came, I think we all probably came out of it more positive than we expected. Um, yeah. not so much for the fortress yet. Um, and that's more personally for me. Um, but when we have our round table discussion, we will talk about that, but we're going to get into the show. Um, and also hopefully everybody had fun with the TMNT commentary. You guys could go back and watch that on our Arsenal X page, uh, or check out the, uh, it should be a movie commentary playlist. So you guys could watch all four Ninja Turtle discussions that we had. Uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, I was telling uh Corey Jesse that you know how we was talking about Batman during the commentary, yeah, and then yeah. our part in play was uh Arkham Knight, <laughs> yeah. So I just like, <laughs> oh, everything fits unexpectedly. <laughs> that wasn't planning anything, but we're gonna get into what's been in our arsenal, Jesse. What's been in your arsenal, man? All right, so um. Obviously, you know, other than playing a little blackout, uh, the beta and stuff like that, uh, I did end up playing that, um, you know, early in the, on Monday or whatever, after the weekend, after last weekend, uh, I still, I got a chance to play it or whatever Monday. And, uh, but did they, did they end it Monday night or? It was like Monday, Monday afternoon, I think, or okay. something like that, or m- maybe early. It might have been earlier Monday because it was, they ended it at 6 p.m., I believe, uh, um, in England, like on their time. So I don't know what it would have been in our time, but okay. I just know I got to play it early, like, and I played it a little bit in the morning, um, before it, you know, before it was done. I played a little, but, um, yeah, so I played that and then, um, I, I played like with the messenger, I don't really play a lot of it. I just like, will pick it up and play like a level or two at a time and then set it down. And I'm just kind of slowly working my way through that. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm to the point where I, I just beat the boss where it was, uh, um, these two ogres or whatever. Yeah. And, um, they, they're like, they're like almost have like a wrestling style to them where they like are, they fight as a tag team Yeah, where they'll, they'll tag each and, uh, each other in and out as I'm versing them. And so I just beat them. That's, that's like the furthest I've got. Well, actually, I think I may have beat one level if you're, if you're after at, that, if you're at the orcs, then you're at the halfway point. Because okay, I, when you get to, I believe, the next section, uh, that's when you, if you beat that boss, you'll be kind of switching into the 16-bit stuff. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm in, like, a frozen level area, like, right now where I'm at. Yeah. It's, like, frozen level. Yeah, so and, you're getting, yeah, like, you'll be close to, you're, like, at okay. all close to the halfway point. Okay. 
Yeah, I was I was figuring I had to get there pretty soon because, like, you know, when I first got it, I I would sit down and play for long periods of time, uh-huh. but late. But lately, I just go through a couple of levels or so, and then I put it down and play something else or do something else or whatever. So I've, I'm just kind of slowly working my way through that game. I'm enjoying it. You know, it's it's uh, it's nothing like like super spectacular. Like it's not like the best game I've ever played, but it's also not bad. So so I you know I'm really enjoying it, and you know I find it humorous at times and stuff. Just you know, just the whole like idea of you, these the bosses, you know, they they they're so like so aggressive towards you, but then they, then they just after you beat them, they're just like, oh, okay, well, go along, we'll help you if you need it. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of weird how like how you know like how the the bosses are in this in this game. You know, they they act really tough, but then once you beat them, they're just like all willing to help you out and stuff like that on your journey and so it's it's kind of just weird like that but yeah i played that um i finished far cry 5 yay finally (laughs) i finally just sat down and just played like the story the story stuff now technically i think there's like one one or two more like missions that are considered story missions but Mm -hmm. i don't know how they're considered story missions because it's just something as dumb as like taking out boats that are carrying like the drugs or whatever because like i beat the bosses and i like you know like actually you know made the final decision in the game but I think it's just you can go back and you can do some of that stuff. So like even though it's technically story missions, they're they're more of like like side missions. They don't really have anything to do with the story. I, it's I'm kind of confused on that on how they decided what things were because normally like if in order to progress into a, a storyline, you'd have to finish all the story uh, missions, but. Like they do it weird where some of the missions are considered story missions, but they're not actually anything to really do per se with, with the actual story progression. I don't know. They, it's the way they have that stuff set up on that game is kind of weird anyways, but, but yeah, like, so I beat that and then, um, uh, what else? I, I, oh, I've been playing some PUBG. uh, on uh, because i i ended up you know like when it when they went to the 1.0 version i ended up getting getting the season pass type thing or whatever whatever you call it where when you know just like in uh in um fortnite where you can you can unlock a whole bunch of extra stuff that you can only unlock yeah you know for your character if you pay the and and it's not as bad as as uh fortnite's it's only ten dollars for the season Whereas I think Fortnite's was like thirty or 30. something like that, thirty or something. Did you uh get a ho- did a whole bunch of achievements pop up for you for PUBG? Because it did um, for Corey. Yeah, there was some achievements and things that popped up. Um, and then I I also, you know, like there I also did get some new achievements more recently with playing okay. it. But I think I think that first time when we got the 1.0, it might have had some achievements pop up. I don't remember for sure. But yeah, I, I've been playing that that mostly. Um, trying to think, there's something else that I I think I played on. Since I didn't do Power Block, I think there's something else that I played on Switch too. I I know I was gonna try to uh, oh yeah I play I did play a little bit of the Adventure Pals again and I actually I did play a little Fortnite okay. too as well um yeah I did I did download like the <laughs> the Nintendo thing or whatever that's only that you can use you know when you have the the season or the the uh, subscription to the online uh-huh. but I haven't I haven't done any of that yet I I probably will eventually. You got get the, the free trial. The, well, I didn't. I didn't sign up for that yet. Even the free trial free yet. Tri- oh, okay. Yeah. Because they offer they offer it to download, but like for me, I just went ahead and paid it. Uh, yeah. Dollars. Um, yeah. Yeah. So and I'm and I'm still I'm still thinking about all that because yeah, I, I don't know. 
I'm I'm still not sure if I really need it yet, but but I well, you know, I'll figure that out eventually. Um I think for the most part that's that's it. Just um Oh, I did play I did play some uh some Wolfenstein uh what is it, New two. Order or whatever. Yeah. I played New Order, the first one. Oh, I thought you was playing two. Okay. No, no, I was playing one because I want to finish one and two, but eventually. But I, I'm gonna now go on to now that I need to get that list from you <laughs> and write it down too of the games right. that I picked because I, I like that. I wonder if um, I should do New Blood and then do Wolf of Sign one and then go into finish up on two. Because I jumped in two to see how we how we play, and I just like well, it's really hard to get into two since I never beat the other one. So I think when I when I uh, I think for my PS4, I think I'm gonna start up. I'm gonna start up one, but I still need to finish the Horizon stuff. Uh, zero yeah, nine, I need to get that platinum, but then um, to get done with De- uh, Devil May Cry four, um, and then hop on to. Uh, her right uh, to um, Wolfenstein because I don't think Wolfenstein okay. is gonna take me long. I think it might take me a month or three weeks, but it depends on how much effort that I put into the game. <laughs> I should say. Yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Other than other other than just like me and you playing uh, <laughs> playing Blackout and getting getting first place. That yeah. was pretty I sweet. Talked, I told Corey that uh, yesterday. He's uh, Saturday. And he was just like, oh, yeah, I got the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why I cannot wait to have that discussion. And and like I said, I, well, I'm still not going to buy Blackout, uh, Black Ops 4, but it is a great mode. It is fun. I, I I will give it that. It it For some reason, it works with that Call of Duty engine. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe maybe you'll get it eventually. Like, cause we, cause I think me and Corey are for sure gonna get it. I know Pat's gonna get it for mm-hmm. sure, but um, cause then we'll we'll probably play that. Cause I I told him I said I'm gonna be honest. I still I still enjoy playing uh, PUBG, mm-hmm. but at the, but at the same time though, like there's just certain things about PUBG that they just. It's just very, very minor, minor things that they could change about PUBG and make it so much better of an experience. It feels like, and it's just they're so minor that I don't super care if they don't. Uh-huh. But it would just make it easier, I think, in general for for people to get into it if they would make them like. Like one of the things that I that I have issues with is like when you're in first person and you want to look down your sights and any other game you just hold the left you push the left trigger down and you'll look down your sight instantly. But in PUBG you have to like tap it and then hold it on the second push and then you know and it doesn't always do that. And if you go against or buy too close to a wall or something, it will put your it will put your gun up completely, and you can't even, you know, aim or shoot or anything. Which is something that's very different that like almost no first person shooter game or game like that does is like having it like be almost too realistic that if you know that you can obviously have your gun pointing out and walk mm-hmm. into a wall without running your gun into it so in that game it, they make your character like put your hold your gun up when you're against a wall so like it's just it's weird i mean it's realistic but at the same time it's just kind of weird it's just not something that's important yeah in a in a game like that and it's kind of like off-putting in a way mm-hmm. that it does that because if you walk too close to a wall and you're trying to shoot at someone, well, then it could cancel out your aiming your gun and then you're dead. You know, I mean, it's 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 just a weird choice on their part to do. Like, there's just certain little mini things like that that I mean haven't completely like wrecked it for me, but at the same time, it's just not needed. You know, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, so yeah, like I'll I'll still play PUBG because I enjoy it. But at the same time, like once Blackout comes out, I can guarantee you that I'm gonna want to play that more 
that I'm going to want to play PUBG. But, you know, like we'll st- I'll still want to play it uh, to, to change it up every once in a while. So we're not just playing the same game over and over again for for Royale with cheese. So. Yeah. But. But yeah, and then I'm hoping you know, like the the call the the battlefield game. Like I'm hoping that we get a demo or something for that, for their uh, their battle royal type mode or something. I hope I'm hoping because we really don't know anything about it. So, I mean, they they talked about it a little bit, but they really haven't. Like you know, like they're like people. I think are gonna want to try it. I, I think with it being pushed back to November, yeah. Hopefully, we get something close to the ink because I would do it for the week of Halloween. In, yeah, in a sense, just to be like you know, if you guys uh, are having a party, want to have some spooky fun or something like that. Here's the mm-hmm. uh, battle royale for uh, Battlefield Five. Yeah. Which the you know like speaking of like that that was such a neat it's a, such a neat touch in the blackout like with the having the zombie stuff in there or whatever but which, which we'll get more into I, that yeah. yeah we did a kind of zombies do I play I I did but but it, that was in my solo play mm-hmm. I like when I'm when I was playing solos um I actually like because I heard that like whenever the zombies are in an area basically uh really good weapons spawn in that area and i actually got that i didn't know that you could even get rocket launcher until that one game that was the only game that i had that i had played where i could pick up a rocket launcher rocket so i had got a, yeah i got a rocket launcher when i was in that area Hello. i didn't i didn't survive but but it was just still cool like i didn't realize that you could get a rocket launcher so i love metal slug when they just say rocket launcher that's why i say yeah, rocket yeah. like that but that's all <laughs> that's been in your arsenal yeah that's pretty much it i think okay so uh for me uh for switch i play puyo puyo tetris um started working on that um, have fun. I'll be getting back to the messenger and some other games. Tried to do the Dark Souls demo, but uh, it was time. And by time, I actually got to try it. It's probably over with. I didn't know it had time dates and stuff, and I had to work a lot, so I missed a I missed a lot of it. Uh, tried Double Dragon on the NES uh, online service. Um, pretty good. It works. Everything is functional. Okay. Uh, I got to see if I could use a pro controller um, for it. But other than that, like the online service works. It's fine. It's good. Uh, for uh, didn't do any, haven't did anything on my PS4 as, for a bit. Uh, but hopefully I will uh, in the coming weeks. Um, like I mentioned, doing the horizon and stuff like that. Hope I'll get back to it. Um, I, uh, for Xbox One, um, been doing more mostly Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, I am at the actual final part of the game, I believe, it, because it was just like if I speak to this person, I can't do fast travel no more. So I'm assuming I'm literally at the end of the game. So I'm trying to do some side stuff and get some things finished. Uh, I think by time when I had started it up, it said 58.4 percent that I had done with the game. So there's some stuff that I'm still missing. So I'm going to try to go and do that before I finish the game. I might finish it this weekend um, and then try to get a review up for it. Um, because I want to be, I, I, I'm ready to jump back into Quantum Break uh, and start mm-hmm. the second chapter and like get through that game. Um, I'm I'm going to be trying to get through Hellblade also. Uh because uh, me and Jesse White, we um, just let everybody know that uh, the beauty of video games is available on ngrradio.com. But if you check out Optional Opinion on SoundCloud, uh, me and Jesse White, uh, shout outs to him. And once again, thank thank you again, Jesse, for coming on uh, to talk the beauty of art with me. Uh, we got into a conversation about Doom. So oh, okay. I, uh, I, I got to see if the Doom games are backwards compatible. Uh, cause there was, didn't the original Doom games come to Xbox 360? I think. Um, yeah, uh, yeah I believe so. I, th- uh, yeah, I think I, I think I. It, it may think. have. 
I I I I believe I have to check out the trick because the rest, the regular Doom is in the remake Doom or the new version of Doom. Oh, it is, is it okay? It. But if I could play Doom one one or two, um, and hopefully I think Doom three is also on yeah. PC. I know th- I think Doom three is on three sixty. Um, I tried to play that game on PC and I couldn't see nothing. But uh, we had a dis- we had a good discussion about that. So I told him that what I'm I'm going to try to get through the Doom games, and hopefully he comes back on optional, uh, and we can have that discussion. Because I want to have him on for Hellblade, and I want to have him on for Doom. Um, so, but I I'm focusing on Shadow, uh, trying to get through that. And dude, I was looking at uh my new game informer came in, and I was looking at the dates for all of these games come out. Dude, it's cr- October is crazy. <laughs> it it literally yeah. is crazy. Yeah, and I haven't even I haven't I haven't touched picked up Spider Man. I haven't picked up Dragon Quest Eleven. Um, th- there's just so much coming out. It's it's crazy. I haven't got the uh, tag team heroes um, by SCK. I I need I want to pick that up. Uh, I want to I I want to get some fighting games on for my Switch, and I haven't picked them up yet. Um, but Sticking to Xbox, yeah, Shadow of the Tomb Raider has been my main focus, and then I'll be jumping into Quantum Break, um, and then try to get to get to my Extinction List because I know The Witcher, is, The Witcher Three is gonna take me a while, and I know <laughs> Jason he kind of beat it in uh, like about three weeks, two or three weeks, so I, I'm probably gonna follow his route of doing mostly the main quest and some side stuff, and then try to try to get to the end of that game. So, um, but yeah, uh, that is what's been in my arsenal, but so we're going to get into some arsenal news, um, or some, yeah. Um, and the first one, first story that we have is, um, update Devil May Cry 5 music video pulled amid stories about vocalist sexual harassment. Uh, Catcom has been hinting for a little while now that a trailer for Dante, the off-protagonist of the Devil May Cry series, would appear at Tokyo Game Show this year. This video, much like Nero's trailer at Gamescom, was likely to include his theme song from the new game, which Catcom released separately today. The, uh, and all of this news is coming from Game Informer. Uh, Dante's theme was titled Subhuman and performed by American deathcore band Suicide Silence. The song conjures images of an old man Dante riding his motorcycle around the arena while cranking his heavy metal at the highest volume it can go. The video was put up today on the Devil May Cry YouTube account, but was eventually pulled after fans started doing research into the band. Before too long, links were being passed along on social media concerning the band's vocalist having a relationship with and sexually harassing a 16-year-old fan for two years. The vocalist, Eddie Hermida, was accused of beginning a relationship with the Australian teenager, pressuring her for nude pictures after sending her sexually suggestive photos himself and manipulating her. For his part, Hermida apologized for the behavior, but claims he waited until she turned 18 to ask for anything sexual and alleged she lied to him about her age. Uh, There's more to this. Uh, The story was originally reported in November last year. Since this discovery, fans have been retweeting at Devil May Cry 5 producer Matt Walker to call attention to the subject. Walker has not been particularly active on social media since the typhoon started hammering Japan, but the video was taken down from the Devil May Cry account, so clearly someone noticed the messages. We reached out, uh, Game Informer reached out to Capcom for comment but did not hear anything back by the time of writing. It is unclear if they plan to change the music for both the game and any trailer that uses it and if it will constitute a breach of contract with the band on their part. A somewhat likely result is that the presumed Tokyo Game Show trailer will either get hurried, edit, hurriedly edited or delayed as a result. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 as a whole, however, will release on March 8th on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And there are two updates to the story. Um, the first update, um, instead of Dante trailer, Capcom released the same trailer at Gamescom with an extra few lines of dialogue. The Dante portion had been edited to simply loop Nero's Devil Trigger again, which features vocalist Ali Edwards. Um, and then this is the second update. 
Capcom has responded to our earlier inquiry with the following statement confirming that their reason for pulling the trailer. The music was recorded for the game before the incident came to light, and we were unaware of the incident until now. However, as we are not aware of the current situation, Capcom has decided that moving forward, we will uh, we will not further highlight the Dante battle theme for promotional purposes at this time. We are also currently evaluating what options are possible for the full game at this point, which is dependent on various factors such as resources. And yeah I, and i know they did they did release the trailer like over the weekend uh yeah i think last i think friday or something i have seen it but i don't i think i seen the edited version and i knew okay. nothing about this i just yeah, thought, I, i'm like oh it's the new devil may cry 5 trailer okay cool uh, i and i didn't know anything about this yeah, I yeah, I didn't I'm this is the first time learning about it <laughs> too like but like you know honestly though like from just from some stories that I've heard like I don't I don't remember what it was uh, there was a podcast I was listening to or they had like talked to someone or something that was like part of like the road crew of like some of those you know like the big metal bands back in the days and And the stories of some of the stuff that they tell of like what they could get women to do in order Mm -hmm. to, 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 um, be able to, for the, these women to be able to get, get, get a chance to come backstage and, and meet the band and stuff like that is, you know, pretty, pretty raunchy (laughs) to say the least. So like, you know, like this kind of stuff, I just, like, I feel like, uh, like we, we probably don't even know the half of the the kind of stuff that goes on with like bands and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's weird that Capcom didn't do their research, and I wonder if it was Capcom of Japan who didn't yeah. check, or if it was uh, if it was like multiple teams and stuff. Because yeah. they like, I, I'm assuming they. They hired them to do music for them, or I don't know if the type of the track that they used was licensed or anything. Um, yeah, but that's crazy. Like your lead singer <laughs> does that. Like, yeah. Well, I, and I think I think the thing is too is is we live in a different time. You know, ultimately, I mean, you know, with the Me Too movement and stuff. Yeah. Um. You know, things things are a little bit more under a microscope now than than they were just a couple of years ago even you know so i i think i think the thing is is you know like i mean it's a good thing but like now you know people are are feeling you know aren't feeling quite as uh, afraid to come forward to talk about things or or whatever and you know and uh, i mean you're always going to have your people who are going to take advantage of that and try to make things up yeah. But that's where you hope the, you know, that the system, you know, is able to weed those things, you know, the, the, the true and the false things out. But, but yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, like the, the, we just live in a different time now where if, if stuff like that was going on and more than, you know, the two people that it happened to or whatever know that it's that something was going on or people you know have have been witness to something you know weird happening it's not very long that it will be a secret anymore so you know i i think that's the thing is unfortunately you know like as a like as you know like the people trying you know coming up with a person to do music and stuff they probably don't really look too much into things Mm -hmm. maybe as much as they should but i think that's probably what happened is they just you know like you don't always know exactly everything about a band you know and and tell you you have to do a lot of digging but right and if you yeah and like like the genre deathcore i i've i i don't follow i really don't know much about it uh Mm -hmm. But I'm assuming it got to be something very hard, and yeah. it probably got to be bleak and stuff like that. Uh, but 
yeah, that's just. I mean, good on Capcom that they that they edited out, edited that out. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, yikes. So. Yeah. But we're gonna move on to the next next story, and this one kind of hit hard for the whole video game community. Um, legendary composer Nobu Umatsu ceases work due to health issues. Uh, Nobu uh, Umatsu, the composer behind a number of Final Fantasy games, Chrono Trigger, and a host of other major RPGs in the past 30 years, has announced that he is ceasing his current work due to health problems. Umatsu wrote about it on his blog, stating that he has been affected by a disease for a few years that has progressed it to the point where he is unable to act at full capacity. Rather than do subpar work, Umatsu is taking time to rest and reconsider, reconsider whether future projects will be doable. The composer could decline to name the illness. Earlier this year, Final Fantasy VII Remake producer Yoshinobu Kisasi stated that Umatsu was working on the game, as he did with the original title. We wish the composer the best health in the future. And I, I wish him the best health um, pretty much everybody in the gamer community was just like go and take your rest like you know he he has produced some of the most memorable video game music not just for Mm -hmm. rpgs but just for the gaming community in total and and even after he stopped doing like video game music he still was making music um Mm -hmm. so uh and, and the reason why I'm I, I put this in uh, Arsenal, you know, in our Arsenal X news, is that this is a man that affects just the whole video game community. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Final Fantasy, definitely Chrono Trigger. Like you could sometimes hear his music and automatically know what game it is. And even if you didn't play it, if you heard the music, you would know or get a hint from where it's from. And you'll see how catchy it is, and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I'm I, I I'm wishing him the best. Hopefully, everyone from NGR wishes him the best. Uh, that he gets his rest and everything, um, because he, like they say, he is a legendary composer. He is kind of like on the level of Miyamoto, in a sense. Mm-hmm. And he 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 was on the level of Iwata. Um, and there's and other big Japanese developers who are at an older age, um, mm-hmm. but they're memorable because they have worked in the industry long, and their track record, whether whether it was a hit or miss, they could they have a huge track record that kind of created the video game industry of now. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't know if you have any thoughts, Jesse, about it. No, I just, I mean, I just obviously, like, I hope, you know, hope it's not, you know, something too serious. And unfortunately, it sounds like just, you know, just from just from the way the way that it's going about, you know, that it could be could be something that that would uh, ultimately, you know, make it so he isn't able to do this anymore, you know, in the past. But but you know like i i feel like i feel like he's obviously he's done a large amount for the community and and you know if he has to step down you know that's it's a shame but but you know like he he should you know be able to go on go on with the, the you know with his life you know and record and realize that he you know he's made a big big difference and a big he's a big deal in the, in the gaming community. So, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, someone, if someone else has to step in and, you know, like someone else will get a chance to, to, uh, show, you know, show the world what, what they've got to offer. So, yeah. And there's a lot, there's a lot of RPG composers. Um, yeah. You know, but, uh, he's just, he's just, uh, a, like I said, a legend. So we're yeah. the best, um, we can't lose him just yet, <laughs> like <laughs> like him passing away or anything. Yeah, I wish yeah. that or anything, but it's gonna be hard the day that he does. Um, yeah, because he's gonna it, like people are, are. He's the he's kind of like 
like I said, on the level of me and mother and, and Iwata, like he's on the level of Iwata. Like if he passes away, there's going to be a big tribute to him. Like, yeah. like that's going to hurt the whole video game industry, no matter what. And it's going to be a day where, where you just want to hear his soundtrack and hear his work and play games that he contribute. And whether they're, whether you like it or not, or are not into it, you know, it's going to be a day to celebrate. Cause yeah. um, like, like for me, I celebrate Iwata. Uh, the day that he died, I, I, I say, uh, I, I tell everybody happy Iwata day. Um, yeah. I, I celebrate Iwata because he, not only did he do a lot for Nintendo, like he, there, you know, the Nintendo Direct that he was hosting, you know, he was making them fun. It was always good to see him. No matter what the Wii U and stuff was going through, he always made a Nintendo Direct worth watching and made yeah. that stuff memorable. So I I always try to get sushi or uh, get something uh, get something to eat, uh, but also celebrate a game that he worked on or that he marketed or or just something that he was kind of attached to the, to bring yeah. memory memory uh good memory dedicated memory to him. and that's what I would kind of do like I have Chrono Trigger so I would throw in Chrono Trigger I have Final Fantasy 7 so I would play yeah. that so I could just hear that music and probably the sales sales of his soundtracks and stuff is going to jump <laughs> Yeah. Well, and honestly, I, I would, I would actually argue that like, like what he contributes to a game is probably even more important than like, you know, like, cause, cause like, you know, like you've got multiple people developing a game. Mm-hmm. So like there's all different personalities that are kind of touching the game as far as the gameplay, but but like when you have one person who's making the music for the game, like that, like if that's not there, that game doesn't feel the same. Like that, like the, like you know, more and more nowadays, and even I mean, well, even back in the day, like with the when there wasn't a whole lot to games, like the music was super important because, yes. like that's where you got a lot of your. Uh, your you know like your story from because there wasn't talking like other than reading you know the text on the on the on the game there wasn't you know dialogue true dialogue in old games so like all your emotions and stuff like that had to come from the music and so like if that music's different that it's not gonna feel like like it's part of like the same you know, games are the same franchise. Like, you know, if moving forward, he doesn't do the music for the final fantasy. Well, it it could sound, you know, pretty different and it would be noticeable, you know, fairly noticeable that, and just like, I'm sure it will still feel like a final fantasy game, but at the same time, it will, you'll probably be able to tell, you know, that it's not, not the same, you know? Well, we're going to move on. Uh, Soul Calibur 4 beta starts on September 28th, maybe. Uh, this is the original story. Um, Bandai Neko has announced an upcoming network test for Soul Calibur 6 ahead of the game's release next month for Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Um, they tweeted out, Warriors, prepare yourself for online battles on PS4 and X1. You are invited to help us test our online network for Soul Calibur 6. Log in and play rank match mode. Download the Soul Calibur 6 network test on September 20 on September 27th and draw your weapons on September 28th at 8 a.m. Uh, the beta runs from 8 a.m. September 28th through 8 p.m. September 30th. There will be 15 characters playable on nine stages. The client can be downloaded on September 27th, one day ahead of the beta start time. While Soul Calibur 6 is releasing on PC as well, the beta has only been announced for Xbox One and PS4. The game will release on all three, however, on October 19th. And this, there was an update. The account has deleted the tweet, but considering how much work went into the video that uh, announced it, it probably just went up early. It is likely the dates are the same as they were outlined below. 
Um, and so uh, one of my friends in uh, the UK, he's going to be playing it. I'm going to be playing it. Uh, I'm going to be downloading it, uh, downloading this on both systems just to get the feel of it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know about you, Jesse, but um, I'm looking forward to playing Soul Calibur Six. Uh, and see uh, what uh, they change. If yeah, if they have a demo, I'll, I'll definitely try it. I I just don't get into fighting games really mm-hmm. anymore. So I mean, it's just not not something I'm really you know that's in my my uh, vision of things that I'm looking forward to. But but I'll I'll definitely try it. You know, like I mean, when I did play fighting games, I I always did like the Soul Calibur games. Um, you know, I've I've always been more like mostly into like Mortal Kombat, but but um, you know, like so. You know, I'll I'll definitely probably give it a try if there's a demo. So, yeah, can't hurt. <laughs> and, it's, and it's rank matches, so um, yeah, that should be fun. Uh, so we're gonna move on to the last story. Uh, Twitch streaming service has been blocked in China. This August, the Jakarta, the Jakarta, well, uh, yeah, the, this August, uh, the Jakarta Palm. Uh, Palm Bank 2018 Asian Games, a pan Asian multi sport tournament, were held in the Indonesian cities of uh, Jakarta and Palm Bank. For the first time in the game's history, esports were included among the various sports events. As China took home two gold medals and esports made their debut, many Chinese and gamers around the world were eager to watch the tournament. Unfortunately, many fans could not because state run media CCTV did not broadcast the event. In turn, many Chinese citizens flocked to Twitch to watch the games, resulting in a massive spike in downloads for the streaming site. Seemingly in response, and since, uh, since, since yesterday when the story was written, Twitch's website has become inaccessible in China, and this app is no longer available in the country's iOS app store, suggesting that Chinese authorities deliberately moved to censor the streaming service. According to The Verge's Shannon Liao, this block follows a regular pattern by Chinese censors who, as a precaution, will block Western media platforms that become too popular. With, while Twitch has since confirmed the block in China, it has not provided any further details. Hmm. Um, other popular companies like Facebook, Google, Twitter, and Reddit have also run afoul of the Great Firewall of China. So far, Chinese authorities have not released any official statements. <laughs> I, I I get the, that pun. They had to squeeze a pun in there. The Great Firewall. Of China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's that's weird. But but I mean like that but at the same time it's not for China. That's like you know, that's been a, it's just recently that they finally got those Nintendo tablet type things or whatever. Or was yeah. it it was a program that you could run on your tablet. No, it was, it was that it was, that played it was a Nintendo. Certain, it's a certain tablet that oh, okay. you buy to play with Okay. Games. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, I guess it's small, small steps. Maybe hopefully someday stuff like that won't, won't be blocked anymore. You know, like they'll, they'll, but it seems like they're kind of slowly, you know, warming up to the idea of games. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, like, Unfortunately for them, it stu- it sucks because there's a a lot they're missing out on. But I guess you just you know take what you can and hope hope that that things will change. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't really know a whole lot about how like how things run there, work there. You know, like but yeah, it, it's kind of a shame. I mean. Uh, you know, like I don't know. I don't know if it's just they feel they feel like if too many people play games that they won't want to work or what. But <laughs> exactly. I'm not really sure how how they think there. But but yeah, I mean that's just kind of weird, you know. Especially if if that was the only way that they could watch, you know, watch those games. And in some situations, it's you know, it's I guess at least they got to watch it. 
you know, hopefully maybe they'll figure out something else in the, in the future, another way that they can watch, watch that stuff. But yeah. And I don't know how long the band is or the takedown was. Um, yeah. So hopefully we get an update sometime soon and find out what the world happened or like what's with the law and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I'll probably check out the verge, uh, because okay. if they have more info like that, then I'll I'll check them out to get more uh, updates about it. Yeah. So. Okay. But we're going to get into our Arsenal exchange. Um, and like I said uh, earlier, we were going to have a roundtable, but we're going to put that discussion uh, on hold. And so our Arsenal exchange is, we know that Telltale Games has, you know, uh, let go a lot of people and I won't say they're that they're not no more uh there's still a chance that Telltale can be brought and uh continue as a business but right now I believe there's only 25 employees there to work do work on uh the last season of The Walking Dead a lot of day projects got canceled and everything and also Capcom Vancouver got uh shut down also them uh they did the Dead Rising games and stuff so all their staff mm-hmm. has been let go and all those projects have been canceled i think they lost what like 84 million dollars or 4 million dollars or something 40 million dollars or something uh yeah i think i think it was yeah i think it was like around 40 million or something like that yeah cuz they yeah they had yeah i don't know there's there's some talk about that i'll i'll get into it later but so um, I'm going to ask Jesse uh, because a lot of people were doing a, a hypothetical question and I thought it would, it would make a fun topic. Uh, should Microsoft buy Telltale Games? And what does that do for, uh, what does that say about the adventure games, uh, adventure game genre? Because right now, if you look, if you think of any developer who's really doing an adventure game, uh, only thing I only only company I could think of that comes to mind is Capcom with the Phoenix Wright games. So, what are mm-hmm. your thoughts? Um, I don't know. I, well, you know, I've been I've been kind of going back and forth. I've been kind of going back and forth on this a little bit, like mm-hmm. thinking about it. Like, like I could see where it would be a good thing to be picked up by Microsoft just because like, you know, like the, the idea of the more, the more single player based games that they can have in their, and their, you know, their arsenal of, of, uh, exclusives would be better. But at the same time, I don't, don't really know what to think about. Cause like, I, I personally, like there's been some, Telltale games that have kind of interested me, but I never, I, I never really got interested enough to ever really play any of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so like for me, like uh, me personally, I don't really care about them. And I, and I know in the past that there's been a lot of negative things said about like the, the way they play and stuff. But like, if we're going on now, like it seems like overall the the uh, um the the newest game that they released, like people have said, is a lot better. Like since they've changed their engine or whatever, updated it. Yeah, I think it's the Walking Dead game. Yeah, so, so people have said that it, it that it seems to be be better now. Um, I still, like I said, I don't really have a personal, like I've not personally played it, so I don't know what the differences are, you know, from then versus now. So I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying what I've, what I've heard. And like, I guess if, if, if they can up, if they've updated things and they've, they've kind of fixed some of those issues that people have, have kind of complained about in the past, well then, you know, I guess like maybe it could be a good a good thing to pick up, but I still don't know if it's going to really be well, something that would do enough for Xbox. I think it would do great for Microsoft and uh they could treat it as like Minecraft where Minecraft yeah. is on a whole bunch of other platforms 
And yeah. even though they haven't did much on Sony with Minecraft, they have done mm-hmm. a lot with Nintendo. Uh, yeah. And, you know, they, they have still, you know, show some support. And so Microsoft is still making money off of three platform, all the, uh, all three platforms. Uh, and I think they could still do, they could still use that business model for switch. And if they still want to do it for PlayStation yeah. four and uh steam, they could do it, do it like that. And they could always, cause they could always do, Hey, it, this is an exclusive release first on windows 10 and Xbox one. Uh, mm-hmm. and then X, switch and PS four will get late. will get their versions a the week later or a month later. Um, yeah. you know, there, there's a possibility you could get a Gears of War Telltale game. You could get a Halo Gears of uh, a Halo. Like I would love to see a, like Halo yeah. as a Telltale's game. Yeah, you know, Marcus. Yeah, if, they, if as long as they can do things right, like I, I think, you know, kind of going back to what I was saying, I, I think if they can do things right and do things, you know, better than they have mm-hmm. in the past. Then it could be, a, you know, a good a good choice. But I think I think the issue, like if I was looking at it from uh, from a Microsoft standpoint, like from a business uh, standpoint, like what they're doing now is too new to judge whether it would be a good investment or not. For, for, for you know, so it would it would be a smart investment because you know they they want more companies. Just just think now now Jesse. Would you not buy a Alan Wake two if if it was based on the main one of the main characters' books, and Telltale did it as a adventure game? Again, it would it would depend on how well they did the gameplay. Because, like for me, mm-hmm. like I I care I don't care about story first. Like I care about but, gameplay but, first. But the, but the ideal of actually taking that game, the protagonist, uh. The protagonist's job, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like one of his books is, you know, because we don't, and I guess in Alan Wake, you never get to read any of his, any of his books. But what if Telltale did it, did like uh, a game based around on Alan Wake, taking one of his stories and making it to an adventure game? Would you not play it? Uh, I might, like I said, uh, it it just would depend on on how well the game the gameplay works. But I well, mean, it, it, you know, like I mean, you know, well, that would determine whether I finish the game or not. Well, don't think you can't <laughs> finish it because they, when they ever since they did episodic, like one episode is like two and a half to three hours. Okay. So you and can... and are the is the gameplay more of like the uh, like Life is Strange type thing where it's like you're 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 like interacting with stuff in you're, the you're, environment. You're, you're, yeah, you're interacting with stuff, uh, but there it depends on when you're doing action and when you're just walking around doing the sequence. Because when you're doing the okay. action thing, there are time stuff that you have to do, but there's also uh, parts where you make a decision that will affect your the gameplay and the okay. character that you made your, that decision for, uh, okay. or a, like for or against, they will have some kind of viewpoint of you, which will change okay. part of the story later on in the game. Okay, so it is pretty similar to like the Life is Strange type mm-hmm. of games where it's like you're you're learning like the whole story of like what's going on in in the in the game and like living it through the characters or whatever. But that that's what some adventure games are. It's just like yeah, it's, yeah. It's story based and you know, but like like the Batman games, you you are fighting crime and stuff, and you are following a set uh set button you know presses and stuff um but there's also parts where you like investigate there's also parts that you make a decision and okay. that affects the story um the the narrative of the story and stuff so okay. um they could do i feel like they could do that for a alan wake game if microsoft yeah. brought them just like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I could definitely see like that that type of you know that kind of game type uh you know, yeah, doing something like that, especially when it's story driven or you know, like book driven or whatever. Like, 
yeah, I, I'm not saying that I couldn't see it happening. I just, I guess I like I I need to like just see what their what their games are about. Mm-hmm. See if it's you know. But I but I mean for the you know sake of of now, like you know I again I like it's something I would play and I and I definitely would be something I, good I, I, I for would, for Microsoft to have. I, I would say that if you could find a real cheap copy of the Batman Telltale game for Xbox One. Uh, I I I I would say get it, or if you can mm-hmm. rent it, or if Pat or one of your friends and stuff got it, um, you can see if you could get it from them because it it has to hold all five episodes, so mm-hmm. you could you could split it up on how you want to play. Like if you if you did the whole chapter now you want to wait till tomorrow to do it, you can do that. Yeah, I think I think I got the the first first season or episode or whatever of of uh the walking dead i think at some point that was free and i i downloaded it and then i uh i just deleted it out of my but i i still have it in my like stuff that i ready to download i think i'm pretty sure it was that i know i know i had something something from from telltale i could have swore that was free at some point to play the first episode it of might, or whatever it might be. I know they did one for Borderlands. Okay. Um, yeah, the border. Yeah, the bo- <laughs> see. I like for me like that just didn't interest me at all because it seemed kind of forced almost. Like the whole like trying to make a story with that. But I didn't it's, really it's more comedic. Uh, yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, it's more comedic than. It's just trying to be like guns are blazing and stuff. Like it's, yeah. it's good writing, and but you know it's this five episodes and you go through it and make your decision and stuff. And it's just like very comedic. It's having fun. Yeah. Um. Uh, the Wolf Among Us is really good as a story. As a game. yeah. And yeah. it's sad that we're not getting to because I I beat the whole game in one day on PS4. One, yeah. or two, one or two days, I think. Uh, I ha- let's just say I had some downtime. <laughs> well, the now the Wolf Among Us that that's a that's a um that that like that's something that they actually created. It, no, is it not? No. no, it's that that's based it's off of another property. property as well. Oh yeah, that's right. It's yeah, Virgo. And DC yeah, owns Virgo and stuff. Yeah, so, that's right. But it it really is good like it, yeah it, it deserves the war status and stuff that it got like i played it and i i couldn't stop gushing about this game because it was that good and and if you play all the tell if you play a telltale game like all five chapters all the way through it's a it's probably about eight to nine hours or ten yeah. hours. well and i and i think that's you know like maybe like a, from uh from uh you know like a a business standpoint if they did if that was a choice that they made i what i'm guessing is like i mean maybe you know they would test the waters the first year like let them make another another walking dead or whatever but like i feel like even the walking dead like as a whole like that franchise is kind of like people are losing interest in it because it's kind of getting stale Mm -hmm. like it's just a constant like it's just like getting to a point where everything's already kind of been done and and it seems like a lot of people have just kind of lost lost interest in the show you know now mind you those are the games if i remember correctly are based more off the the uh, comics yeah but but um so i guess that you know that probably won't change as as much because that that I feel like the comics are are still like pretty important amongst people, you know, that are fans of that first anyways. Mm-hmm. So, but I you know, I could see them maybe just if they did do a did make that choice that they would probably focus more on the ones that have been, you know, like have done really well and have, you know, like people have seemed to be most interested in mm-hmm. and then i could see them maybe some weeding some of those other ones eventually out and then like you said like you know maybe approaching doing a halo one or uh 
you know, Alan Wake one or uh, even a Sunset Overdrive one, maybe. I don't know. Right. Who knows? And, and, and they could and they could resurrect those projects that's been canceled and put them on other consoles and yeah. still be able to take the Xbox French, the Microsoft franchises and do it, do them exclusively for Xbox and one and Windows yeah. 10. So they could, they could kind of split the business in a sense and yeah. really approach different games and stuff. If, yeah. if they, if they wanted to, you know. Yeah, because it would kind of be cool to get like an, an origin story to Sunset Overdrive to mm-hmm. like, you know, like dig a little bit deeper into, you know, how how all that stuff really started and, you know, like, you know, deep dig deeper into that, into that part of the story that, you know, at, at times is just kind of, you know, like forgotten in that game. Yeah. But everybody, that is going to be our Arsenal exchange. Uh, sorry if the episode is kind of short, but you know we kind of want to keep it precise, uh, precise and kind of a, a little bit tight. I mean, we'll have longer episodes in the future because I know we're going to have a, a good discussion on some more games. Uh, but you know, it's sad to see what happens to Telltale. Um, I, I, you know, the whole video game community wished them the best. You know, Ubisoft is having a, I think, a brunch for them, a lunch, and we're just like, hey, uh, we're looking for people come out and eat with us. It's, um, we're paying for it and stuff. Like they tweeted that out and stuff for the employees, yeah. those employees who lost. And you know, uh, all of these developers pitched out to the folks at Telltale and be like, hey, come right, come work for us. And so I think that, yeah. that I think that's really cool that you know people got um, other developers got other developers back when a studio closed Um, because they even did that for uh, what's the one that Amy Hemick had Uh, oh uh, uh, my mind's it starts with a V Uh, Volition or Volition is THQ no yeah okay no um I don't. I don't remember now. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, my mind. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, they they reached out to them. So uh, hopefully, all those people land on their feet. But we kind of want to know what you guys think. Should Microsoft buy Telltale? Uh, and like, what games can you see Microsoft actually doing? If they bought tell if, if they were able to buy Telltale and rehire people, get new people in. What games would you like to see on other platforms and what IP or an ideal of their IP can be exclusively for Windows 10 and Xbox One? You guys can email the show at arsenalxpodcast at gmail.com. Also, you can find us on Facebook at Arsenal X. Uh, NGR's Radio Xbox Podcast Group. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Arsenal X Podcast, all one word, and Instagram on, as Arsenal X Podcast. Uh, you can check out our YouTube channel, Arsenal X Xbox Channel. Uh, Jesse, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Phantom Maggot AX. You can find and SoundCloud as well. <laughs> yes, and you can find Corey at Corey in HD eighty six on Twitter and other places. You can find me at that retro code on Twitter, and you can check out Optional Opinion on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and other podcast apps. Um, the video video games is in this final week. Um, I am talking about the art of the character, talking about the mixture of art and character and how well they work together um you guys can check the past two weeks uh, the first week was the beauty of character and i have a podcast with the guys trey johnson and jeremy from nintendo domain uh also i talked about the beauty of art with jesse white you guys can check that episode that just recently dropped and this uh, Saturday, would you guys, uh, if you guys listen to Optional Opinion, you would be able to hear me and my special guests talking about both uh, the art of the character. Um, and then my special guests will be uh, arriving to give the epilogue to close out everything for the video video games. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Like I said, it is an NGRradio.com exclusive. But as always, we're going to throw up the X one more time. 
Sorry, everybody. I had to throw up my ex a little bit late. I was getting something together. And we will see you next time on Arsenal X Podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>